Hey folks, Gary here with Paramount Tactical Solutions, your source for guns, gear, training, tactics, all brought to you by Real World Experience. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about tourniquets. And you know, there's a lot of videos that I could do uh, on gear and guns and things that are much more fun, exciting, and sexy that would get a lot more hits than this video likely will. But that's okay because, you know, first and foremost, we're a training company. And what we want to always do is maintain a certain level of actual substance, right? We always want to bring you fun, exciting videos about gear and the things that you enjoy. Uh, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we're cultivating a, a subscriber base that, that likes substance, right? That's that, Those are the people that I want. And while this video may not reach as many people, it's going to reach the right people. And that's what this is all about. Now, there's a lot of different tourniquets out there. Uh, and it gets quite confusing, to be honest with you. So these are the five five or six tourniquets that we teach in our courses. And we're a nationally certified NAEMT, National Association of Emerging Medical Technician Training Site. Uh, and these tourniquets work. But what I wanted to do was use this video to boil it down to two tourniquets. I wanted to talk about the two tourniquets that I felt were the easiest to use under stress, that are easiest to, to get to a certain level of proficiency and to maintain a level of proficiency. And you know, there's a lot of different tourniquets out there, but what we're gonna talk about are these two right here. So this right here is the RAS, Rapid Application Tourniquet System, and the uh, SAM XT. I'm gonna go over the features of these and show you why I believe that these are the two best tourniquets for the average person to use. All right, so let's start with the RAS tourniquet. So this is the RAS tourniquet. Uh, just some features of this. Basically what this is, is very unique. It's very different than a lot of the tourniquets out there because this is basically a, a really strong elastic band. If you notice that this tourniquet is very flat in profile, um, that way when you are wrapping this around you, that circumferential pressure is being spread out over a large area. You know, the way that this works, because it is elastic, every time that you're wrapping this, I'm gonna show you how to use this, but every time that you're wrapping this, you're providing more and more and more pressure. So that way it provides a good tourniquet and good full occlusion of, of those blood vessels. You'll see right here we have what we call the three finger loop. That's in, important to maintain. And the mechanism of which this ties off, if you will, is kind of looks like a little boat cleat. So it's a very simple thing. The other thing that's great about this tourniquet is that it's very low profile and easy to conceal. First of all, when I travel with these overseas, I usually carry a black one. Right, and I'll actually run this around my belt loops, through my belt loops, or I've even tucked it down into the waist of my pants. That way you can't see it at all. We also have a lot of uh, personal security details that run this particular, that way it's very low profile, um, and you can actually run this down your leg or again around the waist, but it's easy to conceal and easy to carry. We also, on our website, we also have these sleeves and they make it much easier to carry as well. That way it doesn't, you know, it keeps it nice and compact and you can throw it into your pocket, uh, you know, a purse or a backpack or whatever it is. So those are nice to have as well. So that's the overall profile of this. I mean, again, it's a very simple device, which is one of the reasons why it's so simple to use. So basically what we do is we take this end here, this free running end, and we stick it through that three finger loop. Now it doesn't matter, and that's what I like about this, it doesn't matter if I put it on this way or this way. Once I do get it on the appendage I plan on using it on is I'm pulling away from that three finger loop. I'm pulling and I'm wrapping. Now I'm keeping these wraps close together, right? I don't want them crossing over. I don't want them, you know, way out here like this. I want these fairly close together as I wrap this. Now I can tell you right there, I only got one wrap, but I already probably got a full tourniquet. If it is not a full tourniquet, uh, blood flow has stopped going down my arm dramatically. Now. That's one wrap, two wraps. All right, again, I'm trying to maintain to where it is still close together and they're basically touching one another. That is beyond a full tourniquet right there. And all I, all I need to do now is take this, slide the end of this under that little cleat. And now we have this tied off and I have a full tourniquet. It's very quick, it's very simple, and it's very easy to use. Folks, I will tell you right now, this is probably the most intuitive tourniquet um, <clears throat> that I know of, right? So this is something that I can show somebody how to use once or twice. They can get a couple repetitions on it and then they don't need to look at it for six to eight months to a year and they can throw it on and figure out how to use it very quickly. Some of the other tourniquets over here, um, people have a hard time maintaining proficiency. You can take one of those tourniquets where they have trained on it. You know, during our courses, we get to a point to where we have everybody putting tourniquets on in under 20 seconds. You take six months away from that, they will get this on under 20 seconds. They will not get the majority of those on in 20 seconds if they haven't trained on them regularly. So that's, again, another reason I really like this tourniquet. It's simple and it's easy to use. The other thing that I really like about this is that you can train with these to some extent. These other tourniquets, if you start tightening them down, 
and including this one that we're going to talk about next, has a windlass, so it's applying a lot of pressure. As you start to tighten that down, if you're tightening it down all the way like you would when you're getting a good repetition and practicing with it like you would in real life, um, it starts to degrade the structural integrity of that tourniquet. And they say if you're training with this, this is no longer a tourniquet that you want to carry on you and use in, in real world application. Uh, this tourniquet, you can get a lot of training out of it before you start to degrade any sort of, of real structural integrity, anything that really matters. And you can see, this is one of our training tourniquets. It comes from a bin full of other tourniquets. There's literally thousands of repetitions on this tourniquet. And you can look here on this little kind of band that goes around here. This is just mainly for looks and to dress it up and make it look nice. But we have a metal clamp right there and also keeps you from getting scratched up or anything on that. But really, even though this is starting to tear, the, the, the tourniquet's structural integrity is the exact same as it was from day one. Now, if it does start to tear like this, it's probably time to put this over in the training. But there again, this has thousands and thousands of repetitions and this is not something the normal user is going to uh, experience af until after a very long time. So again, super simple, super easy, super easy conceal. Um, they come in different colors. Again, you can get it in a low profile black, or you can even get a five pack of these, which is great to throw in a larger first aid kit or a trauma kit that you're gonna keep in the house or in a vehicle or something like that. Um, make sure they're unwrapped, make sure you prep them. I also wanna say that this video is not a substitute for training, all right? I'm showing you, I'm giving you some basic understanding of the tourniquets and the two that I think are the easiest to use, but that is not something, you're not trained, right? You're not a, a tactical medicine or tourniquet ninja at this point, right? You need to come get some training with us or another really good reputable company so that you can use these and understand how to use these in context, use them correctly and, and possibly save a life and as opposed to possibly doing more damage than good. That's really what it comes down to. All right, so now a substitute for training, just an overall overview of some, some tourniquets. So I've given you kind of an overview of this particular tourniquet, now I'm gonna use this in real time. So suddenly I'm injured, boom, I'm throwing this in there, throwing that on my arm, get it as high and tight as possible, wrapping, wrapping, all right. Boom. Now again, what is great about this tourniquet is while within just a few seconds, I put a timer up there, you see what my time is that I, um, that when I stop. What is another great feature of this particular tourniquet is even though I don't have a full tourniquet at this point, just applying it, starting to pull, it is starting to occlude blood flow. All right, we already are slowing the bleeding. All right, by one wrap, we probably have a full tourniquet taking place. By that second wrap, for sure, I got a full tourniquet and I could go around again if I wanted to, right? But easy to use, simple and easy to remember how to use and very quick, it is very fast. The other thing that's great about this tourniquet, unlike a lot of the other tourniquets, this is one of the few tourniquets that you can actually use on pediatric patients, you know, infants, uh, small children, as well as animals. You know, we have a lot of canine units that carry these for their dogs, but these can be used on, you know, strangely shaped limbs like a dog leg or some other type of animal leg. These are very versatile. And again, they're one of the few that can be used on children, which is one of the reasons that I carry these uh, on my person at all times. The other thing that's important to know about tourniquets is you need to make sure that you're getting them from a reputable source, right? So all the good ones are counterfeited regularly on Amazon, eBay, and many other sources. So make sure you're getting them. So for instance, this is actually a counterfeit rats tourniquet that was purchased on Amazon. Uh, it is about a quarter the, of the strength. Uh, this is gonna fail on you. Now, somebody bought this thinking, oh, you know what, I can save 50 cents. When it comes to life-saving equipment, like, I don't know, tourniquets, med gear in general, or body armor, those probably aren't the places where you wanna bargain basement hunt, right? I'm not gonna go on Amazon and find a tourniquet, a RAS tourniquet that's 50 cents cheaper and come to find out it doesn't work. So again, that's not the area to necessarily save money and these aren't that expensive anyhow. Saving a couple bucks by buying it on Amazon or eBay, uh, could probably cause more harm than good. So just something else to think about. All right, so moving on, let's talk about the Sam XT tourniquet. This is a pretty innovative tourniquet. Um, there's a lot of cool features about this. And you know, when it comes to tourniquets, all tourniquets have pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. Some definitely have more than others, right? And this one I really like, and it's a fairly new tourniquet. Uh, it's only been on the market for a couple years now, but it, it covers a lot of the shortcomings of very similar tourniquets. And if you look over here, we have probably the most prevalent tourniquet there is available. And this is the CAT tourniquet, the Combat Application Tourniquet. Um, you probably see more of these than any other tourniquet out there. And because these are so prevalent, we teach these. Um, and you know, they're overall, they're, they're great tourniquets, but they do have some shortcomings. So let's talk about a couple of the shortcomings of the, the Combat Application Tourniquet. One of the big disadvantages of this tourniquet is the fact that it is 
held together simply by Velcro, right? So, you know, Velcro, when it is muddy, bloody, dirty, all right, it tends to get a lot weaker and it, it often fails. The other thing is when people put this on, they often don't put it on tight enough. They'll put it on just like this, but then they have so much slack to take up with their windlass that by the time they actually start tightening it, all right, that they've run out of ability to, to turn this windlass. So that's one of the issues with this is people don't pull it tight enough. Um, the other thing is, again, is once we get this secured, I can get this, start applying that tourniquet and turn in this windlass, all right, and suddenly this comes loose and whether somebody stepped on it or it's just come loose because I didn't secure it all the way, uh, whatever it is, this comes loose and now I've completely lost that tourniquet, which could cost me time, uh, possibly add to injury and, and possibly cost a life. So, you know, those are some of the shortcomings of this particular tourniquet. And we see that in training all the time. We see time and time again, students, even after they got a couple of good reps on this, they're still not pulling it tight enough. They're still not, not remembering to secure enough of this Velcro that when they start putting the, the tremendous amount of force that you can put on this, uh, the, the tourniquet with the windlass, all right, well, this is a, a mechanical advantage. As they start to turn this, this breaks free and they lose the, the tourniquet, all right? So it's not effective. So those are some of the, the shortcomings of this. The other one that I've seen personally in combat is the fact that it has a phenolic plastic or, or, or polymer windlass. Um, this is a generation seven, right? This is the most current generation of these. So there's been a lot of improvements. There have been seven iterations of improvements on this tourniquet and this tourniquet is a good tourniquet and they've gotten a lot better from generation one. But in 2008 in combat, we actually put two of these on a guy that had an amputation on the leg uh, and we snapped the windlass on both of those. We ended up throwing a different tourniquet on there, a soft tee on there that, that took care of the problem. So, you know, Again, we do. We still have this plastic windlass that could potentially break. Now let's talk about the Sam XT and how it addresses all the shortcomings or disadvantages of the the cat tourniquet. So first of all, on our windlass, it's aluminum. It has good knurling, real aggressive knurling on both ends. Uh, so you're always going to have a good grip on that, which is is actually nice. The other thing is we. It's a very similar in design, and you can see it's it's very similar. But the differences are are these holes that you see all throughout the band. It still has Velcro. But the way that this actually locks into place is through this device right here. So as you put enough pressure on this, and when you pull this tight enough, with enough pressure, these teeth come in and lock right, into place. The way that I apply this tourniquet is I put it on my arm and I start pulling. And once it gets to a certain level of tightness, enough pressure is put on, you're gonna see these teeth right there that protrude through through this device, all right, and lock in on the strap itself. Now this has Velcro, but the Velcro is only a secondary. The primary is that locking device, which is super cool because now even if the Velcro comes undone, I can still tighten this all the way. And now we have a primary and alternate a redundant securing. We have the ability to redundantly secure this tourniquet, which is a nice feature to have. And then we have a, a an aluminum windlass that I'm gonna tighten and tighten and tighten until I can't tighten anymore. And then we'll place in that keeper and then we'll secure it with Velcro. It's simple and it's pretty much a fail safe design, even under stress, which is super important. You know, not everybody out there that may have to use one of these is a medic that can train on this types of devices all day long uh, and get very, very proficient at it. So there again, this is pretty fail safe. Um, and I wanna show you, I'll try to show this to you, but we have this device right here there again, when this is pulled enough, all right, those teeth protrude out there and that locks into place and that lets you know that it's tight enough to start using that windlass. So there again, it takes all the guesswork out and then to unlock it, all we need to do is lift up on this tab, all right, and those teeth retract. It's pretty much fail proof or at least very fail resistance and it's super simple and easy to use under stress. So that's really what it's all about. All right, so just like I did with the rats, I'm gonna apply this in real time. Um, and I always have my tourniquets prepped. I usually make the loop big enough to where it can go over a leg or an arm with a large coat on. And then of course, I wanna make sure that this Velcro portion right here is not, do not store it like this. We want this stored out of the way so that we can get that windlass in there. Uh, and again, we wanna make all these things simple so that we can apply them rapidly under stress. All right, so I'm gonna apply this tourniquet in real time, just like I did with the other one. And we'll, we'll throw a timer up there and we'll see where we're at as far as time. I'm gonna prep this just like it normally would with any tourniquets that I have in my home uh, that I'm gonna carry on my person and or in my vehicle, right? So 
with a tourniquet like this, a windlass type tourniquet, I'm always gonna prep it to where the loop is big enough to where it can go over a leg and or a arm with a large coat on there. So, so just like this is how I store it, all right? And we'll throw a timer up there and we'll do this in real time. Threat, all right, I'm injured. I get this as high and tight as possible, all right? And I start pulling that thing. I pull it, it clicks into place. All right, now I start turning my windlass. I could just go ahead and set it right there because I definitely have a full tourniquet. We're gonna go around again and boom. Okay, that is uh, very painful and it has definitely got full blood occlusion. Once I have it at that point, now I can take my time, put it on there. I can write down the time uh, that I applied this thing on. So. Uh, that I don't know what the time was, but you can see it right there. It doesn't take a lot of time. And, it, and while I might spend an extra 10 seconds or so doing one full extra turn, that's probably not required. But again, you always want to tighten a tourniquet as much as you possibly can. And if you can get around again and you can clamp it in, go ahead and do so. All right, folks, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was informative. I know tourniquets are not cool and as sexy as long guns and bipods and optics and all the good stuff, but it's super important, right? Um, matter of fact, it's the most important course and the most important gear that we offer, period. It really is, because it's the it's what saves lives. Uh, please go to ParamountTactical.com uh, where you can check out our training schedule. We have long-range courses, our tactical carbine, handgun courses, and our med course. We actually have a med course that's going on tomorrow. I'm really excited about that. Uh, our med courses... Again, I'm a gun guy, but our med courses are our most important courses because they save lives. We actually had a student leave one of our courses, uh, come across a car wreck, and definitively save a person's life using the skills and the equipment that he got from us. Uh, so that is a really cool testimonial, uh, without a doubt. So anyways, go check out our website. Make sure that you hit like and subscribe and comment down below. If there's some other type of med gear or another tourniquet that you want me to go over in depth, uh, please comment down below. Now, we've been getting a lot of comments and a lot of compliments on our lighting, our audio and our visual stuff. Um, and really what it comes down to is that is because of our great team of AV technicians. Um, and you know what, I want you to meet them. I think they deserve it's a little bit of recognition. Hey guys, can you kind of come up here and, and say hi to everybody real quick? Say hi to the, uh, the viewers. Hi. Where's, there, where's everybody else? It's just me. What? <laughs> oh, okay, um, yeah, all right, so it's just him? I guess. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, and until next time, stay armed, stay ready, and we'll talk to you soon.